thank you all for coming. Uh, my name's uh, Michael Gagliardo, and I'll be talking about a, a, a math teacher circle that I, I did, uh, I've done a few times at our Thousand Oaks uh, teacher circle. And uh, I kind of just want to get right into it, just so we get, I'm going to treat it just like you all are, are the teachers at the teacher circle, so we're going to participate in some of this. And in order to do that, I really need, we'll, we'll get in, right into the, the presentation pretty quickly. Uh, just some, uh, some of the things that I think this uh, works on, the, that's really good about this, uh, this and many of the teacher circles in general. Uh, one of the things about this one in particular is that uh, it explores uh, simple and familiar ideas in a, in a deep way. And it sort of changes what the, the teachers know about geometry. Many of them who teach geometry are very familiar with, with how geometry works to the point where they don't even see what the, the struggle is anymore, where by changing just something very small, it all of a sudden completely changes the world, and now they're back in the, the role of the, the students. Um, so I'll come back to this after we're done, and we can talk about some of the, some of the goals. But uh, the first thing I want to show is a uh, treasure hunt. All right, so we're going to... Uh, find some treasure, and the idea is a treasure is going, going to be placed on this grid somewhere, and then we're going to have to try to try to find it, basically just by guessing. That's the only information we'll have. So, I'll need someone to guess. I don't know if you can read the the streets up there. Um, a cross section, uh, you know, uh, one of the avenues, first through fifth, first through sixth, and then one of the streets: fir, elm, dogwood, chestnut, birch, or ash. Hopefully, we don't get it on the first try. Otherwise, we'll just have to do it again. Fourth and dogwood. Thank you. So, Fourth Avenue and Dogwood. All right, so it's four blocks away. All right, that's what we know. And the, the question is, all right, we've got to make a second guess. So we guessed right here, and it's four blocks away. Where, where could it be? Right, I mean, OK, so Dogwood and, well, could it be on Dogwood anywhere? Not on Dogwood, right? There's nowhere it could be on Dogwood. All right, so if it's on Chestnut, where would it have to be? Right, it have to be, okay, so first and chestnut. Uh, what about birch? All right, right, second or sixth as well, okay? And then if we're on ash, we kind of see the pattern, it would be third and fifth. All right, so let's just pick one. You want to do ash and third? Does that sound agreeable to everybody? Okay. And let me just make sure, right, one, two, three, four, yeah. Okay, so now we're eight blocks, we're further away. But can we use the information from before and this one to help narrow it down? Okay, so we know we're eight blocks from this one, we're four blocks away from that one, so where can we be? We got sixth and fur, oh that's only, is that four? That's four, right? Okay, sixth and fur, any others? Okay, so, so we're, do we feel comfortable with six, six and fur? Let's see what happens. Congratulations, and in two moves. All right, we got the, we got the treasure. All right, so the, we're gonna talk about something called the taxi cab metric. What we just saw is, is an example of it. Um, I'm gonna, just another one of why it's called the taxi cab metric. So this is Austin, Texas, one of my, one of my favorite towns. And if I wanted to go from the governor's mansion to the, the Driscoll, all right, any of you know the Driscoll, it's a very fancy bar at the bottom of a, a fancy hotel. Uh, but if I wanted to go there, you know, I could, I could ask what the distance is, but that doesn't really matter because that's not the distance I'm actually gonna have to travel. I would have to do something like this. So we call the taxi cab distance seven. It's how many blocks you go in one direction plus the number of blocks you would go in another versus the Euclidean, which is just, we know, a squared plus b squared square root. All right, so to make it a little more formal, the distance between two points, P equals x1, x, or y1, and Q equals x2, y2 is this formula. All right, we're summing the differences of the coordinates instead of squaring them. All right, so real quick, just to make sure some of you may or may not have worked with it, a couple of these, what are the figure out what the distance between some of these points are. Taxi cab distance, just a warm up problem. Okay, three, right, because two minus zero, so we're just adding the coordinates. Six. Okay, I think we, I'm gonna go a little bit quicker through this part because I think we're a little more uh, used to that. The one thing I do wanna point out, and this is what trips people up a little times, is they're not required to be on grid, grid lines. We can take any two X and Y, great. We can do the same thing here. Uh, one thing to note, just real quick, I'm not gonna go through all these, but which is longer, the Euclidean distance or the taxi cab distance, or, and when are they the same? When you say the taxi cab distance, you mean the distance between the two points 
Right, so that's the question, what do we mean by this? Right, if we take the endpoints and find the, the taxicab distance between the endpoints, how does that compare to the Euclidean distance of the endpoints? One of, those would have, one of the differences would have to be zero for them to be the same. Okay, so if it's horizontal or, or vertical, they seem to be the same, great. And then, which one's usually longer? The taxi. Taxi, great. Okay, moving on. All right, so how's the circle defined? Okay. Are we, are we happy with this as our, our definition? And, and be sure that you're happy because you're about to agree with this and you may regret it later, but, but this is your definition. Okay. So circle center today with radius R as a set of all points. A circle center today, uh, distance R from the point A. Great. So how should we define a taxi cab circle? Exact same way. All right. And this is, this is a stepping out of the actual activity. This is one of the times it's good to bring up the teachers. This is what's good, for, good about a general definition is it works even if you change the definition of what distance means, this still works as a, a thing. So depending on how, how used to you are with dealing with this, quickly on your, on your graph paper, draw a ta taxi cab circle of radius one centered at zero, zero. Yes? Are there any points that don't live on streets? Yes, yeah, like I said, you don't have to be on a, on a grid. Uh, I mean, any point in there is a point in the plane. Okay. So you could have the point pi e and figure out its distance from zero, zero. All right, so do we, do we have some, I think I saw most people have some ideas. Um, so the, the taxi cab would be, well, so clearly the points 0, 1, 1, 0, negative 1, 0, and 0, negative 1 are on there. But then any whose coordinates sum up to 1, whose absolute value of coordinates sum up to 1, will be on the, the circle. So we get the, the diamond shape. All right, so then how many different ways can two taxi cab circles intersect? And of course, compare it to how two Euclidean circles intersect. So spend just a, a few seconds, uh, a few minutes looking at this, and we'll, we'll come back. But how can two taxi cab circles of different radius, of different centers, how can they intersect? All right, and just to make sure with Euclidean, right, we have the circles go inside, they intersect in two points, or they're tangent. That's our only possibility, right? So we have lots of different odd ways of intersection with two taxi cab circles. All right, so some of the, the intersections, like you said, we, have, we still have the two points, the one point, uh, the coincide, but we also have two, two side, or one side can lie on top of another. You can have the double intersection where they, they meet at a corner. Those are all possibilities. So, so we're starting to see some differences. Taxi cab circles are a little bit weird. Um, so let's look at some more taxi cab weirdness. Uh, sometimes here, the phrase, the shortest distance between two points is a straight line. Let's see if this makes sense in taxicab geometry. So we're going to take a real close look at that word between. What do we mean by between? So in uh, Euclidean geometry, we can say that a point Q is between points P and R in the plane if and only if the Euclidean distance between P and Q plus the Euclidean distance between Q and R is equal to the Euclidean distance between P and R. All right, that's what we're going to take as the de definition of between. All right, and if you look at, you know, you can figure that out with any, any two points. All right, so now using the taxicab metric, find all points that are between the point zero, zero and the point one, two. Through them. So we notice, so it, it definitely the lines, the, the points on the, the, the Euclidean line between the two uh, points are on there. But then you notice the whole box, anything with the height, where are we, height two with one, anything in that box it satisfies the definition of between. So we get this weird idea, do we want to talk about a line being all points between? Well, that causes problems, because then we have to deal with that box being a line, and we have to be okay with that. And whether you are or not, that's, you know, we just have to be consistent. Okay, so this is where I think it, it sort of really opens up in, uh, in the, the teacher circle, is what I want you to do is, with the people around you, make a list of topics in geometry that depend on distance. All right, so however something is defined that has distance or length, right, make a list of those. And then what we're going to do is see if those properties, those theorems, those ideas still hold for taxicab geometry. All right, so the one I'll give just as an example is pi. Right, pi is the length of the circumference divided by the radius. Both of those are lengths of some sort. That's something that depends on distance. We can see what pi means in taxicab geometry. 
So think of things like that. What in geometry depends on this length? Now try to figure out what the taxicab versions of those are. All right, so just to give some ideas, if you haven't had a chance to, to uh, uh, or if you haven't gotten through all, so some things I heard were, um, what, what happens to isometries? You know, what, what, do, what do rotations mean? What rotations actually preserve distance? Uh, triangle congruencies. All right, does sangle, side angle side still hold on, uh, in taxicab geometry? And does it matter the orientation of the triangle? That's the other thing we have to, to do. I saw a lot of people, they drew their triangles, and, and two of the sides were parallel to the axes. But remember, back in the beginning, we said that when that happens, we know that Euclidean and taxicab uh, measurements match. So try taking a triangle that's slightly different. Uh, the triangle equality was, was one that was brought up, um, inner product spaces. Another one that's, that's interesting that um, I, I still don't necessarily know if there is a formula. I, ha I have had groups get fairly close to it, is the area formulas. Right? So area is area. But then we have formulas for area. Is it true that base times height times one half is now the area of a triangle. Does it matter what the orientation is? is and is there a way we can get a more complicated formula that is based on the orientation? Right, or is it just, just helpless? Um, but one of the ones, and this is something that, that I've gotten a, a master student of mine proved a pretty interesting result using these ideas, is the conic sections. Right, conic sections deal with distances. So uh, given two points, for the ellipse, just given two points f and f prime, an ellipse is the set of all points p in the plane such that the sum of the distances uh, from, of p to f and f prime is constant. All right. So actually, let's, let's spend a little bit of time, maybe a minute or two, try to figure out, just pick two simple foci and figure out what, the, what a, a taxicab ellipse looks like. And the, the next question, of course, is does it matter if the foci are on the same line or is it what happens when they're, they're offset? a little bit, like 0, 0, and 1, 2, let's say. All right, so let's, uh, let's take a look at that, because something really interesting starts happening with these. OK, so, so the ellipse, if they're, if they're in the same line one way or another, you get a hexagon. And if they are offset, you'll get, a, uh, you'll get an octagon. All right, so I'll let you see how that happens. And then you can do similar things to hyperbola and parabola. Um, and then I, one of the things I do right at the end to wrap things up is talk about, well, we did we did taxicab, which was basically the distance. The, you, many of you know it as the L1 metric, and then there's the L2 metric, which is Euclidean. Well, you can do this idea, the same thing, where you raise it to the power p, where p is any value between 0 and infinity. Certain, of the, certain ones of these are actually metrics. Others are something called pseudometrics, but, um, or pseudonorms. I forget how it works. It's been a while. But, the, uh, but what happens is, let me get this running. If you look at the different unit circles using all the different values of p, you get this. And the ones that are flashing are the ones that we've covered, or we're familiar with, the, the Euclidean, the L1. But then you see what happens as p gets less than 0, you get these concave uh, uh, circles. And the, the, what my master student did is he took the ellipse, and you find out for, if you take an ellipse for small enough p value, the ellipse becomes disconnected. It becomes actually in two parts. And he found the p value at which that, um, that happens. So that was kind of neat. All right, so again, why do I, what are some of the goals of this? You know, exploring simple and familiar ideas in a, in a deep way. We're looking at you know, what's really going on with some of the geometry things, uh, foreign conjectures from exploring. So a lot of times, we spend more time on the proof aspect of it, and they're trying to prove the area formulas. Um, and I, I, again, this working with generality in definitions, I think, is something that is you know, sort of the whole point of, of, of a good definition, is that if you change one aspect, you still get something. And then justification. All right, so thank you for coming. Uh, I think there's a few minutes for questions. OK, so my name is Katie Wanick. And I just had a quick question on that slide that you were showing the flashing shapes. Mm -hmm. What is p defined again as? Sure, p is the exponent. OK, the p is the exponent. So if p was 2, it would be the standard Euclidean metric. We'd be taking the square root of okay. the term squared. If p is a third, right, then inside you'd be taking the, the cube root of the dif difference and then um, cubing that result. OK. And then so on. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Other questions? One over here. Thank you. Uh, David Grumbach from USC. Um, how much time do you give them to answer the questions that are about like definitions like, oh, what's a circle? Or Much, uh, I, much more than I, I do now. So the, our teacher circle usually is about 
think we take about two, maybe two and a half hours for the whole thing. Okay. And, and we spend the first half hour having dinner. So I would have done this thing in about two hours. So, so this, this step here, this uh, come up, I think, somewhere over here, the, the one that is, which top, this I spent a lot. I mean, this is the bulk of the, right. of right, the right, class. Right, right, right. Yeah. Uh, just sort of randomly, and, and um, you ask them, uh, what's the definition of an angle? Right, so there, that question comes up. Uh, how do we define angle? And in order for, to, to go through this, we can just say an angle is what you, happens if you stick a protractor on it. And, and just, you know, an angle is an angle. That doesn't change. Um, and, and that's, there are ways to, to yeah. Uh, I, I love, the, we cover that in one of my geometry courses, if, the, the text by Henderson to Mina, one of the questions is, what is an angle? And you spend a lot of uh, time on that. So that is, it is a valid question. But you can define it just sort of as the, the space in between the two lines or something like that, and then it just matches the regular definition. So the angle comes first, and you don't have to worry about distance. But then there is the question, right, if you define it in the other way, how does the taxi cab and Euclidean angle match? Right, so is it, the thing is, it's sort of problem setting. You have, you have to say, you know, what is the problem we're dealing with? What are we assuming? So you really do have to separate those two. Yeah. Angie Hodge, and do you do this for middle school teachers, high school teachers, or both? Uh, so our teacher circle has traditionally been both, um, and we haven't really distinguished. It's something we're starting to, to distinguish, but, but I have, this one has been done for both levels. Um, I think the, the high school teachers think it's really cool, and the middle school teachers, they like it, but they're not sure. They, they, I think they feel a little bit at a disadvantage for some of it, but at the same time, they, they do seem to, to enjoy it. 